I got to say, it's been a long time coming to get a Schneider up here on my workbench, and I'm thrilled. This is going to be the first part in a series of videos where we're going to run this guy through a bunch of testing. Here we go. Hi, I'm David. Welcome to my channel where I like to DIY renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. I finally have a Schneider on the workbench and I'm so excited to test it. So this is the Schneider Connex XW Pro. It's the current model of this, but this uh, platform has actually been out for over 15 years and this is the third version of it. This is a 6.8 kilowatt continuous inverter, but it has an amazing surge capacity to it. Uh, it can do 12 kilowatts for an entire minute. It can do, um, I think it was 8.5 kilowatts for 30 minutes. I mean, really impressive. It has a big toroidal transformer on the inside, so it handles surges better than pretty much anything else on the market. Right now, this is a first impressions video. We're gonna get it hooked up to the battery bank right here, and we're gonna make sure that it fires up produces voltage, maybe we'll turn on a lamp or something, but in future videos, we will be putting this through its paces. I really wanna overload it and get it to shut down, but we'll see exactly how much it can take before it happens. While I'm filming this series, if any of you have uh, things that you would like to see tested on this inverter, please let me know in the comments below, and I will try to do as much testing on this thing as I can. What I really appreciate about this inverter is that it was designed from the ground up as an off-grid inverter first, and primarily off-grid. Secondary, They've added a bunch of features where you can uh, backfeed the grid, you can do a zero export, uh, you can do AC coupling, so things like that that we typically are expecting with the other hybrid inverters on the market. But unlike some of the other hybrid inverters on the market, you've got this big transformer in here. It's designed to take the loads. So if you've got whole house air conditioners or deep well pumps, you're not gonna have to go around and replace them with uh, inverter-driven mini splits or soft start kits or whatever other things out there. We have some manuals. Covers, filter, quality control, and our steel back plate. This is to mount it on the wall. This inverter is an inverter charger. It's all UL listed, uh, but it is not a charge controller. You cannot hook solar panels directly to this inverter. If you have a solar array, you will need one of two options. You'll either need a charge controller, which Schneider sells charge controllers that work with this, or you will need a grid tie inverter, and this inverter can do AC coupling and frequency shifting uh, to get the uh, grid tie inverter to shut off. If any of that is confusing to you, don't worry. I'll run through those things in more detail in some of the coming videos. Let's look at some of the other features that they built into this. We've got uh, two compartments inside. There's a compartment for the electronics and a secondary compartment for the transformer and the heat exchangers. So the cooling compartment is separate from the printed circuit boards, the PCBs. Uh, and that is for longevity purposes. They wanna make sure that when you're cooling this unit, you're not getting dust on the computer parts. They're really trying to make the design of this industrial strength, something that can last decades for you. I was first looking at these about six or seven years ago. Something that was uh, a bit of a turnoff for me for this inverter, there's additional components that they seem to want to sell with it. Uh, at the time, it, there was the gateway. Currently, it's called the Insight Facility or Insight Home. Uh, there's a separate PDP or power distribution panel. Um, and I wasn't sure if you could even turn this thing on without all that. So that's what we're gonna try uh, coming up here in this video. We're gonna try turning this on and see if it can work without having all the additional components. All right, first initial impressions. Well, we have a screen up here with a couple of controls on it. And you can see it was originally set up for lead acid because they have an equalized button right on the front. <laughs> Looking down here, we've got our big positive and negative. They even tell you the torque specifications on that right off the bat. We've got our data communication 
um, over here. So we're certainly going to have to look in the manual for all those details. We have a mesh screen and in the box it did come with an additional felt filter that you could clean. Uh, this is where the air would be intake and flow past the transformer and we've got a grounding lug. So very simple. We've got three knockouts so that the AC wiring compartment should be inside here. And if we move around, inside here, this is the transformer uh, inside that compartment. And we've got all of our specs on here. Uh, it should be pre-programmed as 120 and 240 volts. You have the option of rewiring it as 120 only if you want to. Looking in the compartment, we're gonna have our generator input, our grid input, and our AC output uh, load. It says on that little tag there to use six gauge wires rated for 90 degrees C. So right there on the PCB, it says use copper conductors only and some torque specifications. These relays built in, they're the transfer switch that will transfer from being an inverter powering the loads to letting the grid power the loads or the generator power the loads. That's what these relays are for. Now in the manual, I was reading that these are 60 amp relays uh, so you have to make sure that you don't exceed that. The user interface panel is using these smaller screws. The larger screws were for the large cover. So the front cover can come off. In older models, you used to be able to replace this front cover with something else, but that is a legacy product, something that's being discontinued. We're gonna take a close look in here. Starting at the bottom, we've got our positive and negative ports, and they both come up and then come across and go through this uh, ferrite, I think is what we call that. Yeah. So we're gonna have our positive and negative uh, coming up through here. Uh, this one is the positive running down the middle, and the negative splits. Half of it goes on the left side, half on the right side. Uh, this is a communication board connecting up to all of our communication ports. And you can see that there's a backing plate here. All of these components uh, are inside this one compartment and there's these grommets in between it and the back compartment. So air does not flow through all of this stuff. Air, th air flows through the back component. So air is drawn in here and blows up through the back compartment but all of these electronics and capacitors, they're running in the upper compartment. Well, all of this looks really beautiful and I'm gonna make a rough guess at what's going on, but please let me know in the comments below uh, just how wrong I am. Uh, we've got our 48 volts from the battery going in at this point, going through the capacitors and underneath the capacitors, it looks like there's two layers of PCBs or printed circuit boards. And underneath them looks like a bunch of MOSFETs. So right here in this area, we're actually going from 48 volts DC or direct current and changing it into 48 volts alternating current AC. And then that alternating current is going down to the transformer, which is underneath it. And then popping out from the transformer on the other side is our 240 volts AC or alternating current uh, with a sensor tap for the neutral. And then it gets cleaned up here, goes through relays if it needs to, depending if it's gonna tie in uh, to the generator or not, and then out. All of that being controlled by this computer. So I think that's the general layout, and let me know. Well, I'm gonna put the covers back on and we'll try to fire it up. Inside the box with this inverter came all these additional things. So we've got a pair of manuals. This is the mounting plate that goes on the wall. 
and they line these holes up 16 on center, which is really cool. So you can line up multiple backing plates. We have a battery temperature sensor, a ferrite core. This goes around the uh, communication cable, the ZAN bus cable. We have a couple of plastic covers. These are required even if uh, the bottom of this is inside the wireway. Uh, these are some jumpers. These are only necessary if you convert the inverter from its factory 12240 split phase over to 120 volt single phase. So we're gonna put the lock washer on the bolt first and then the flat washer, put that on. This is a two aught cable. The manual says to use a four aught. Uh, so I'm not gonna be loading this inverter up heavily right now since we're just testing it. The inverter is currently hooked up directly to the batteries. The batteries have their own pre-charge resistors built in and that's why I can just turn on the circuit breaker here. Let's check out if it's on. So it's in standby mode. Let's see, oh, there we go. I hear it humming. I think it actually just turned on. All right, well, I, I wired in this uh, outlet really quick here. Let's see if we can get something turned on. I hear the inverter humming. Let's see if it works. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it does. Well, that's excellent. So we know the inverter is working right out of the box. I didn't have to do any programming at all. Now I feel much more comfortable about putting in the effort to hang this up on the wall with the PDP, knowing that uh, I don't have a broken unit. <laughs> well, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you stick around for the whole series on this Schneider inverter. And uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.